Hello and welcome back to MLab 1101, Introduction to Clinical Laboratory Science. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster and this is going to be the second of our three-part presentation for the third unit of this course, Laboratory Math. So this section is going to be all about dilutions. When working in a clinical lab, it's incredibly important to be able to accurately and reliably make dilutions from reagents, stock solutions, or perhaps diluting down a patient's sample to get that sample in a readable range. So what is a dilution? A dilution is making weaker solutions from stronger ones. The dilution is expressed as the volume of the solution diluted per the total final volume of the dilution. So let's use an example. Making orange juice from frozen concentrate you mix one can of frozen orange juice with three cans of water. In this example, we have one can of OJ to total four cans of diluted, or to make a total of four cans of diluted orange juice. So we have one can of concentrate, and you're gonna add three cans of water. Three plus one is four, so the total volume is four. The original volume is one can, so that is written as one, two, four. Now let's use this in a more lab practical example. So we want to dilute one mil of a patient's serum with nine mils of saline. So the dilution would be written one to 10 because we have nine plus one for a total volume of 10 mils and one because we have one mil of patient serum. So that is a one to 10. So you express the volume of the solution being diluted, one mil of serum, for the total volume of the dilution, which is 10 mils. So again, this is said one to 10. Now let's use another example. We have one part of a concentrated acid that needs to be diluted with 100 mils of water. So the total solution is 101 parts. That's one part acid plus 100 parts of water. That's 101. The dilution would be written 1 colon 101, and you would say it 1 to 101. It's important to note that dilutions don't have units. In the last two examples, we used mils. So we had 1 mil of patient serum and 9 mils of solution, and we made a 1 to 10 solution. We didn't say a 1 to 10 mil solution. You don't add units when you have a dilution. It's just written one number expressed to another number. Again, the 1 colon 10 is said 1 to 10, and no units are expressed. The dilutions are always expressed with the original substance diluted as a 1. If more than one part of the original substance is initially used, you want to convert that substance to a 1 when expressing that dilution. So let's, here's an example. We have two parts of dye diluted with eight parts of water. Or excuse me, diluent. So diluent is the term that we often use as the diluting solution. So the total volume here is 10 parts total. 2 plus 8 parts of diluent is 10 parts total. So the dilution would be expressed 2 to 10. But we want the original substance to be expressed as a 1. So to get that original substance expressed as a 1, we want to apply the proportion equation. So here's the proportion equation worked out on the right side here. So we started out with two parts of dye to 10 parts for the total volume. Now this is what we have, and this is what we want. We want it to be expressed with the original solution being diluted as a one. So we plug in one, and then we just multiply this out. So cross multiply, x times two is two x, it's two x, and then 10 times one is 10. So to get this x, this unknown value by itself, it's attached to this 2 by multiplying by 2. 2x two is 2 times x. So to get rid of that 2, we want to divide it by 2, which means we also have to do it to this side of the equation. So we divide this 10 by 2 as well. 
So this drops down, the 2 is gone, and it's just x. And this drops down, and now we just have 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So our unknown value is 5. We plug that back into what we wanted. And now we can say that our 2 parts die to 10 parts total volume, our original 2 to 10 dilution, can now be expressed as a 1 to 5 dilution. And this would be the correct way to express this dilution. It's also important to note that the dilution does not always end up as a whole number, but we still want that original solution being diluted to be represented as a 1. So here we go again. We have two parts of whole blood are diluted with five parts of saline. The total volume is seven, two parts of whole blood with five parts of seven, with five parts of saline. That's a total of seven. And so we would express that as a two to seven dilution. Let's plug it back into our solution here, our uh, formula here. We have two parts of whole blood divided by seven parts total volume. So to get what we want, we want the original sample being diluted to be represented as a one. And we have an unknown value here. So we do the same thing as we did in our last equation. We multiply this out, x times 2 is 2x, 7 times 1 is 7. So we drop that down to this line, now we have 2x equals 7. Get rid of that 2 on this side by dividing it by 2, which means you also have to do the same thing on this side. And so now we have x equals 3.5. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. So we plug this value in, back up into the top, and now we have a 1 to 3.5 dilution. So we can express what originally was a 2 to 7 dilution more accurately as a 1 to 3.5 dilution. So now let's talk about a dilution factor. A dilution factor is defined as the reciprocal of the dilution. For example, one part orange juice mixed with four parts of water is diluted 1 to 5. Four parts of water plus one part of concentrate is five. The original concentrate is one part, so that's one to five. So the reciprocal of one to five is five. So the dilution factor for this example is 5x. So we have a 5x dilution we're making with this example. Now let's apply that into an actual clinical setting. So a technician is performing a laboratory test on a patient serum to find out what their glucose level is, also known as their blood sugar level. So the patient's serum is too concentrated. The patient's glucose level is too high and it won't read on the instrument. So what we need to do is we need to dilute that patient's serum down to get it in a readable range for the instrument. So the technician decides to make a one to two dilution. That would be one part patient serum plus one part of diluent. Makes a one to two solution. One plus one is two for the total volume, one being the original amount of the sample. So now we make this the dilution and we rerun that on the instrument and we get a value of 210 grams per deciliter. That's the, the new value we get after making the dilution. However, that's not what we want to report out because we need to correct for the dilution factor. So what we do is we find the reciprocal of the dilution, 1 to 2, that is a 2x dilution, and we have to multiply that by the value we got with that dilution. So the final result would be what we got, which is 210 grams per deciliter, times the dilution factor, which in this example was two. So the actual patient's glucose value was 420 grams per deciliter. And this is a perfect example of why it's so incredibly important to know how to do dilutions in the clinical lab. You don't want to report out 210 grams per deciliter to the doctor when in fact the patient has a blood glucose level of 420 grams per deciliter. So it's also sometimes necessary to make a dilution for a reagent or a solution in the clinical lab 
to make it weaker. And an example here, we have 100 milligrams per deciliter solution of a substrate that needs to be used for a laboratory procedure. However, all we have available is a 500 milligram per deciliter solution of that substrate. So to make that dilution, we need to dilute out 500 milligram per deciliter solution to get 100 milligrams per deciliter. How do we do that? So in order to do that, we use V1, C1, V2, C2. This formula here is used to make a stronger solution weaker. And what we have here is, think about it, think about it this way. On this side, V1 times C1, this is what we want. Volume 1 times concentrate 1, this is what we want. On this side, this is what we have. This is what we have to work with. So we have volume 2 times concentrate 2. And now, let's just plug in the numbers and see how it works out. For what we want, we want, say for this example, we want 100 mils. We want 100 milliliters of the working solution, which is 100 grams per deciliter. And what we have is 500 milligrams per deciliter. And now we need to know how much of this we need to pull off to make 100 mils of this solution. So all we have to do is plug in the numbers. For V1, what we want is 100 mils. For V C1, excuse me, what we want again is 100 mils milligrams per deciliter concentration. And you just plug those numbers in here. So that is 100 mils times 100 milligrams per deciliter. And on this side is what we have. V2, we don't know how much of this concentrated volume we need to pull off to make our diluted sample. So V2 is our unknown. C2, however, we know what we have, and that's a 500 milligram per deciliter stock solution. So we're solving for V2. So 100 mils times 100 milligrams per deciliter is 10,000. 100 times 100 is 10,000. And we want to solve that for V2. So what we do here is we get rid of this 500 by dividing this V2 by 500. And you have to do the same thing on this side. So 10,000 divided by 500 is 20. So what we do is we have a V2 of 20 mils. So what we need to do is to dilute 20 mils of, so you want to take off 20 mils of this concentrate, 500 milligrams per deciliter, and dilute it with 80 mils of diluent. That would give you a total volume of 100 mils and a concentration of 100 milligrams per deciliter. And that's how you would solve this problem. So that is going to conclude the second of our three-part presentation for laboratory math and we will pick this back up with surreal dilutions.